In this video, I want to show you how to do Gaussian process regression using scikit-learn. Now, I'm using Replit as my Python editor. You can do this in any editor and um, you need to install Python. Now, first of all, if you look at the top of this slide, you need to import a few packages. So the first package that we need to import is NumPy and I import NumPy as NP. Then we need to import pandas as pd to do some data handling. Then matplotlib as plt, that is to plot our interpolation function at the end of this video. And then the most important library that we have to import is um, from scikit-learn, the Gaussian process regressor. So from sklearn.gaussian process, import Gaussian process regressor. And then we need some kernels. Now I'm going to import a few different kernels so I can show you the effect that different kernels have on the quality of our Gaussian process regression function. So from sklearn.gaussianprocess.kernels import radial basis function, constant kernel as C, rational quadratic as RQ, white kernel, exponential sine squared kernel as EXP, and the dot product kernel as lin for linear. Then in this video, I'm going to do an example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to interpolate weather data. So I'm going to train my Gaussian process regressor on weather data. And then I'm going to attempt to make an interpolation of the global horizontal irradiance, which is the uh, uh, basically the solar radiation that is in this data file. I want to interpolate that. And for that interpolation, I need to train my Gaussian process regression and I'm going to train it on a whole set of weather parameters. So I need to import my CSV file that contains my weather data. So that is what I do in line nine. I say df equals pd, pd is pandas, dot read CSV, that's the function for reading a CSV file, a comma separated uh, value file. And my file in, in, in this case is called weatherdata.csv. If you want to import, I mean, whatever your data file's name is, you put it in between the two quotation marks and then I indicate the separator to be a semicolon. Then what I need to do is I need to transform this data file to an array. So that is where I'm going to use NumPy. So I say DF array. That's just my um, array that I create is np.asArrayDF. So I transform my data file to an array. And now I can go and extract each column from my data file. Now my CSV file looks like this. So you can see it has different columns and each column contains a different weather parameter like the date or the global horizontal irradiance, direct normal irradiance, direct horizontal irradiance, temperature, barometric pressure, relative humidity, etc. So each one of these columns I want to now import into a separate array. So the first one is I'm going to import date and I'm going to say date is my array, DF array, and I'm going to use all the rows from row 0 to row 177 of the first column. So that zero indicates the first column of my CSV file. It's indexed from zero. And so I can go through all my different variables uh, down that list. Uh, you can see their air temperature would be row number one to row number 77 of the ninth column of my CSV file. So you need to know in your data file, when it's a CSV file, which column contains which variable. So I'm busy building my training set now. So to do my training set, I am going to concatenate all these different arrays and I'm going to call it variable Y. So I'm going to say Y is np.as array and I concatenate all of these uh, different variables and I create a nice um, training set. What I need to do now is because this is a time stepped data set and I want to train my output for different time step inputs, I need to create a, a time step array. So this is capital X 
and we have 177 data streams and for each one of those data streams we need a time step so that is what I do here I'm going to say x is np dot at least 2d and I create 177 instances time instances in time and then for each one of those time steps there's going to be an output array containing my weather parameters for that specific time step then when we do our interpolation we need a test set so we want to query our interpolation our trained Gaussian process regression at specific points and that is where lowercase x comes in in this case so I'm going to say lowercase x is np dot at least 2d and I'm just going to do a lens space with the same length as the um, as the training set so it's going to be 177 but I can use an arbitrary amount of points spaced equally within this length. That's what the lens space does. So in this case, I use 10,739 data points spaced equally between 1 and 177. Now you will see this is what we're going to use to plot our interpolation. So at each one of those points, we are going to get a interpolation function after training our Gaussian process. Then we can instantiate our Gaussian process model. For that, we need to specify a kernel. Now, in this example, I'm using some compound kernels. And as I've said in the beginning of this video, I imported different kernels so I can combine them and I can illustrate the effect that they have on your interpolation characteristics. So the first kernel we're going to have here is going to be kernel equals, I'm going to take the constant kernel and I'm going to multiply it by exponential sine squared kernel with a length scale of 24 and a periodicity of 1. Then I instantiate my Gaussian process, so I'm going to say GP is, and that could be anything again, you can make it uh, just G for Gaussian, I use GP for Gaussian process. GP is Gaussian process regressor. Remember that is the scikit-learn regressor that we imported in the star. And as arguments, I'm going to give it the kernel that I've just defined. And I'm going to specify a number of n restarts optimizer. I'm going to specify it as four. Now you can usually play around with the amount of optimizer restarts depending on how much computational power you have available. That is the amount of times that the optimizer will restart to optimize our kernel hyperparameters. And you'll see, you need to kind of strike a balance. So let's do four, and we see what the result is. If it's not satisfactory, we can always change it. So I've set up my Gaussian process, and now I can say Gaussian process.fit. And what I'm going to fit, I'm basically training my data now. I'm going to fit the data set capital X, Y. So capital X, that, that's our time steps. And why? That is the output at each time step, I've got a certain array of weather parameters. And my Gaussian process needs to learn what are the correlations between these different variables. And that is what the Gaussian process regressor does in the background using your kernel. If you want to know more about how that is done, um, I have a course on, on Udemy. I'll post the link in the description and you can um, get more of the insight of how the Gaussian process regressor algorithm operates in the background. But that's not the point now. So we go gp.fit x and y and that is why x and y need to be the same length. And now I've trained my Gaussian process. What you now do is now you can predict. So I say I call it y pred 1 and comma sigma 1 and the reason I add sigma 1 there is because I want a confidence bound and I say gp.predict so now I'm going to predict I'm going to predict on lowercase x lowercase x is our test set and I'm going to say return standard deviation is true because that standard deviation that it returns now will go into my variable sigma 1 and that will be used to plot our confidence interval so it's a very handy characteristic of Gaussian process regression is that you get these confidence intervals. Now, what I did next is I used different kernels, um, compound kernels, I played around with them. 
Um, over here, I've got a constant kernel multiplied by exponential sine squared kernel multiplied by a rational quadratic kernel with a certain length scale alpha parameter, length scale bounds. And I, for each kernel, I train a Gaussian process regressor. And you can see in this case, I set the end restarts optimizer to 100. And I fit my Gaussian process and I predict my interpolation values. So this I do for different kernels to see what the difference is in outputs. Then I plot my output. Now I'm not going to focus on plotting figures here, but that is what I use um, matplotlib for, which is not the, the topic of, of this video. This video is about showing you Gaussian process regression. So I plot the figure with the different interpolations and I plot the figure and I save the figure and this is how it looks. So you can see I've got four kernels from top to bottom, four different kernels that give me different interpolation characteristics. So what I wanted to interpolate here was global horizontal irradiance and as I said that is a solar radiation value in my data set and so it's periodic you can see at night it's zero and then kind of as the day starts it goes up and it, it, it has a bit of irregularities because of clouds that um, form etc but the red dots those are our observations so that is data that we have measured the blue line is the Gaussian process prediction that is where we have queried our Gaussian process on our test set and importantly, the shaded area is our 95% confidence interval. Um, that gives us a very nice measure of how confident this model is about predicting the behavior of the data. Now, what I haven't done here is I did not predict the behavior of the global horizontal irradiance into the future. I just interpolated it. That is also possible. And this you can call a multi-in single out Gaussian process regression because I've trained it on arrays of different variables. And I got a single prediction out or a single interpolation with global horizontal irradiance. And that's very handy. Um, the more relevant data you get, the, you give the Gaussian process. And if I say relevant data, I mean it needs to be weather data from the same site in this case. The, generally, the better the prediction and interpolation for your output variable can become. Of course, the larger your training set is, the more computational power you will need to train your Gaussian process regression. So that is it. I hope you've learned something in this video. Um, be sure to check out the link in the description if you want to learn more about Gaussian process regression and its advantages and how it operates in the background.